Hello guys and welcome to my channel. I'm the DUI Ad and today I will show you how you can build your own battery pack for an e-bike. So in this video I will build my e-bike battery. I have a case ready I have purchased from AliExpress for $30. I have chosen this case because you can put a built-in controller for an e-bike. Uh, I have the Panasonic cells, I have 50 of them. I have a BMS, it's a 20 amp BMS, it's for 10 series, so we're gonna have 5 in parallel and 10 in a series. So let's get started. I'm going to build a 36 watt battery pack with a capacity of 17 amps hours using 50 cells. If you need a 48 watt battery pack, you can build it with the same case as using 52 cells, 4 in parallel and 13 in series arrangement. I will be doing 5 in parallel and 10 in series to create my 36 watt battery pack. You can take screenshot of the cells arrangement if you're building uh, with the same case. Uh, you don't need to waste your time uh, figuring out the best way to arrange the cells. I decided to use nickel plates instead of nickel strips that are made for this arrangement. You can find them for 48 volts battery arrangement as well. I will add most of the materials and tools I'm using in the description if you're interested. I will be using the spot welder uh, I have reviewed on my previous video. You can check that if you're interested. Using nickel plates uh, are making the task uh, much easier and less messy. I would suggest going for it as the difference between this and the nickel strips is just few bucks. I'm done with the spot welding all of the cells and before I can continue with the next steps I will quickly check if I'm getting the correct reading from the cells. Uh, I should get reading between 41 and 42 watts as I have charged the cells to the nominal capacity of 42 watts a few weeks ago. If you're getting a smaller reading it might indicate some of the cells are not properly connected and you will need to do some troubleshooting before you can continue. This is the BMS I will be using, it's rated for 20 amps. The black wire is the B-, uh, that's the negative one that needs to be soldered on the negative terminal of the battery pack. The blue wire is the P- and it's the discharge negative. The yellow cable is the C-, which is the charging negative cable. The two red wires are on and off switch for the BMS, which I will be using. The small wires are the sense wires that will be soldered on each series connection between the parallel pack. The first wire is the black one which is the negative and goes in the negative terminal of the battery pack. The second wire is 
to be soldered on the other side to continue the zigzag pattern but I don't want to waste my time by turning the battery pack back and forward so I will just solder the, the, the one side first basically you need to follow a zigzag pattern as the cells are connected in such way but it's just easier to do one side first and do the other side later When I'm done I will turn the battery pack from the other side and solder the rest of the wire starting from the second in series. I will use a battery insulation paper so I will have a nice layer of protection. It's very cheap and it's peel and stick, which is handy. I will use Captain tape, which is a heat resistant and isolating tape uh, to tidy everything around. Make sure you don't use a normal tape. Alternatively, you can use an electrical tape, but uh, the, this Captain tape is far superior. Next, I will solder the discharge positive wire, which is a 14 gauge rated for uh, 20 amps. And make sure you have a good connection with a cell pack. I'm making three soldering points for the wire. The discharge negative wire, which is the P minus, is too short, so I will have to extend it. I will use this great technique for connecting two wires that are a size of 14 gauge or up if you don't have any other options. So this is an alternative option if you don't have anything else. If you did it properly, you will not be able to divide them even if you're using a good amount of strength. Uh, I will solder them together and I will add a shrink tube to cover it up and we are good to go. I used the hot glue to glue the BMS to insulation paper so afterwards I can glue the BMS on the battery pack. It's time to solder the battery negative wire to the negative terminal of the battery pack. I'm soldering the positive charging cable to the positive terminal of the battery pack. Afterwards I will solder the charging negative that is the C- from the BMS. Now we are soldering the discharge negative on the case negative terminal which is marked. I used the wrong wire the first time and it was not easy to remove so that is why you can see some burn marks around the case terminal. I'm now soldering the battery level indicator which you can use to see how much of your battery is left. I'm not sure how accurate it is but I will still install it 
and it's good to have it to see if your battery is still on or not. It won't work if the BMS is off. I decided I would drill a hole above the battery indicator in the middle so I can add a switch button so I can turn on and off the battery pack. As the button switch is 26mm long I printed some washers to raise it for 6 millimeters until I receive a shorter button switch that would be of appropriate size because this is too long for this case. At this point we have a fully working battery pack, we just need to put everything where it belongs and basically we are done. I will do a quick test for the voltage to make sure everything is working as it should. This is the last step to ensure we did a decent job. So we are done with our battery build for an e-bike. Uh, as you can see, it's a straightforward process. Uh, there's a small learning curve, uh, nothing serious. Uh, you just need to have some proper tools, some specialty tools like the spot welder. Uh, other specialty tool I would consider specialty is a load tester. If you're buying cells and you're not sure if they're fake or not, this is a great tool to have. It's pretty cheap. I also have a review on it. You can check it out as well. If you don't want to buy a load tester, you can you can buy this kind of a, a battery charger. Uh, it has a load tester. It will tell you the capacity of the cells. It takes a lot of time and you can configure how many amps you want to do the discharge. I believe it's doing a discharge with a half an amp. If you're patient, and if you really don't want to test every single cell or you don't plan to do anything else except testing the cells, I think just buying this charger uh, will be perfect and it's not that expensive. The reason I have purchased this case, it's how long, how long one case, I'm not sure, uh, uh, because you can buy uh, the, the bottom part of the, of the battery, uh, is it the, the, the mount for the battery uh, with a booting controller. This one is for 36 volt and it has a, it's rated for 22 amps. 
So buying this kind of a controller, it's almost the same price as buying just the controller itself. Uh, this cost me around 50, 50 few dollars. And it's kind of handy. You can fi find them cheaper, but I try to find one that has a light option. I will link this in the description. Uh, you, ca you can check it out. Uh, if you're building your own bike and you don't want to have a lot of stuff hanging off your bike like me, uh, having a built-in controller will, will look much sleeker on the bike. And especially with a waterproof connection, uh, it's much safer. I already have a one bike which I'm driving for a year with this kind of a connections and it's perfect. So I will finish with the video. Uh, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I will try my best to answer. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, please put the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for the support and see you on the next video.